Hello and welcome to Barat Ministries. We are moving on to the studies on taking no thoughts or don't worry. Jesus spoke about it in Matthew chapter 6 and we're really going through the Sermon on the Mount. Please catch up with the other videos that are on Barat Ministries and on a, on a YouTube, Barat Ministry YouTube channel as well. Today we're moving on with take no thoughts for tomorrow. Now that's a difficult thing because we're always thinking about tomorrow. But what is the Lord is trying to say to us? So more is going to help us in explaining and as we go back in details on what the Lord is saying. So Maurice, help us to understand what Jesus is saying. And I believe you have a book that yes. you wanted to show. Uh, I'll advertise it every time. Mm -hmm. uh, Content All Covetous. This is the fifth book in the series. There's mm -hmm. six books uh, that cover the Sermon on the Mount. This is book number five. Mm -hmm. And they're available from the website, as Joseph said, www.barratministries.org.uk or the available from Amazon mm -hmm. as a Kindle download or as a paperback. Mm -hmm. So let's read the part that we're up to, uh, Matthew chapter 6. Matthew 6, yeah, okay. And uh, I think I'll read from verse 24. Mm -hmm. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, he'll, or he'll hold to one and despise the other. Yeah. You cannot serve God and mammon. And therefore, God, Jesus tells us to not worry about certain things. The first one, take no thought for your life, mm -hmm. your life, mm -hmm. as opposed to Christ's life in you. Mm -hmm. There were two lives, have the Adam life that I can walk in, or I have the life of Christ that I can walk in. If you walk in the spirit, yeah. you don't fulfill the, the lust, lust of, of the, the flesh. flesh. Yes. So we've studied that, you can check it on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And then the second one that we looked at last study, take no thought, don't worry, don't let it be important, food and clothes. Mm -hmm. uh, and you, you wouldn't think that Jesus was worried about that, but there's some good teaching in that. Mm -hmm. And now we're on to the last one, mm -hmm. verse 34. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for the tomorrow's shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Wow. So we're still under the heading of you yeah. can't serve two masters. Yeah. The masters are not God and Satan. Mm -hmm. For a Christian, they God and covetousness. Mm -hmm. And let's read a couple of scriptures to yeah. introduce it. Ecclesiastes 5, verse 10. Mm -hmm. yeah. He that loveth silver shall not be satisfied yeah. with silver. He that loveth it. So yes. we're talking about greed, <coughs> covetousness. Yeah. Nor he that loveth abundance with increase. It's vanity. It's, mm -hmm. it's worthless in yeah. God's eyes. Mm -hmm. When goods are increased, mm -hmm. they are increased that eat them. And what good is there to the owners thereof, mm -hmm. save the beholding them with their eyes? Mm -hmm. And then Colossians 1. And we've read this before, but yeah. repetition is good teaching. The more you look at the scriptures, the more you'll remember them. Yes, absolutely. Joseph and I... Uh, I've learned so many scriptures over the years studying the Bible. We can quote it, and it's so important to know your Bible. Absolutely. Colossians 3. Verse... And, it's, and it's good how we bring the old and the new together. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so it's not just one side. It's the full book. It's the yeah. whole. Yeah. Yeah, it's for me, yeah. So Colossians 1. So uh, Colossians 3, verse mm -hmm. 1. Yeah. Paul says, if... Mm -hmm. Because we, we say we're seated in heavenly places yeah. with Christ Jesus. Yeah. Obviously not literally, we're not in heaven. Yeah. But that's our position spiritually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he says, well, if you are, if you're risen with Christ, why you seek seek those things above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God? Yeah. Why aren't you, if, you, if that's your position spiritually, mm -hmm. why aren't you seeking things above? Yeah. Set your affection on things above, well, not on things yes. on the earth. Christians have their eyes on things on the earth. God bless me. God yeah. give me this. God give me the other. Mm -hmm. they're, they're not thinking of treasures in heaven. Mm -hmm. They're thinking of treasures on And Paul challenges us, if, mm -hmm. if you're seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus, why are you seeking the things of the earth? That's not reasonable. You're only kidding yourself. You don't really believe you're seated in heavenly places yeah, it, because your eyes are on things on the earth. It's a challenge be, be, between you know the real gospel and the, what you call prosperity gospel. Yeah, uh, they believe Christians shouldn't be poor yeah. uh, because they literally think about 
poor materially. They don't yes. they don't understand the difference between poverty of spirit and poverty material. Yeah, so yeah, it's, yeah. it's mixing them together and that's a challenge. So this is good to expose that. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So Paul gives mm-hmm. advice, set mm-hmm. your affection on things mm-hmm. above, yeah. not on things on the earth, for you are dead. See, a dead man <laughs> can't think about yeah. these things. Absolutely. For you are dead and your life is hid with Christ in yeah. God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall he also appear in, in with glory. Yes. Mortify, therefore, that means kill yes. the, the members that are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, mm-hmm. inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which, which is, is idolatry. idolatry. Yes. So we t- we're talking about treasures on earth, which is covetousness. <clears throat> it's idolatry and the idol. I have to be satisfied. And I like that because if somebody didn't understand the first two verses or three verses, then he breaks it down in verse five to yeah. tell you really what he means. Yeah. So yeah. because these are the things of the earth. Yeah. You see, all of those things are idolatry. But now as you move into the spirit, this is what we have to understand living in the spirit and yeah. living on the I like the self explanation of the Bible sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Because people don't read on. No, yeah, no. So, yeah, all those things are satisfying the flesh, adultery, yes. fornication, yes. and services. It's all to satisfy me. I become the idol. I need satisfying. So you can understand why Jesus says uh, in chapter 6. So Matthew, Matthew 6. Now. Matthew chapter 6, yeah. yeah. But seek first the kingdom of God. It says all the Gentiles, that's what they seek things on the earth. Mm -hmm. But you're different. You're a Christian. You've got the life of Christ in you. Mm -hmm. So why are you seeking things on the earth? That's what the the, the world seek. Seek, you seek first Mm -hmm. the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. See, it's always the opposite. You don't go for what you want. Of course, we like nice things, nice houses, nice clothes, nice surroundings. But you don't seek those. You seek things above the kingdom and God will bring those behind you. It's how you call cause and effect. It's it's the principle. You know, it says, lay hands on the sick and they will recover. And these signs will follow those that believe. So when you're looking for signs, you've got the cart before the horse. Yeah. It's the wrong way around. Yeah. They're supposed to follow you. You preach the truth, mm-hmm. the signs will follow you. But we're running around after signs yeah. and miracles and feelings. Yeah. The feelings are a consequence of obeying God. Absolutely. The gospel's simple. You just preach the truth with no additions to it. We've been talking about, haven't yeah. we? We'd like to put a conference on, uh, explaining some basic things because the gospel's not being preached anymore. So, Jesus says, take no thought for tomorrow. So, is he saying, don't plan? Mm-hmm. Not That's at important. All. Is he saying, well, not at all, because time moves. Yeah. You you know, we've got to decide what we do when we finish this television broadcast. We we can't just not plan. You've got to meet your wife. I've got a sermon. I've got a Bible study tonight. So because time moves, we're compelled to look to the future, Mm -hmm. even moment by moment. So planning is part of our human makeup. Yeah. Why? Because we're made in God's image. Mean, planning yes. is part of God's maker. God's the world's greatest planner. Planner, yes. yes he true. planned the end before the beginning. Yes. When he first made the first creation, he already had planned the new heaven and the new earth. He'd already planned oh, for yes. sin. Yeah. What will happen if they sin? His plan for Jesus Wonderful. to come down. So to, to say that we can't plan is silly. So yeah, what's he God. meaning? Don't take no thought. He's saying, <laughs> like the others, don't let it be important. Okay. Don't worry about it. Yeah. You see, we worry about the future. Plan it, mm-hmm. but don't worry about it. And don't okay. plan more than you need. Because wor- worry there it can lead to sin. It is can, sin. What yeah. is a sin? Because so you plan, but you entrust him with your plans. You entrust him with tomorrow. Well, James says, yeah. say, if God wills, I'll do this. There you go. If God's yeah. see you in the plan. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. Because I don't know. I'll, yeah. I'll say, I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. God willing. Because yeah. anything can happen. So if I say that and you can't turn up, mm-hmm. I don't think, oh, Joseph again. Mm-hmm. I think it's all right. 
I don't worry about it. That that's hard for me because I'm a, a planner. I like things yeah. disciplined, but we, we've got to learn. It's God willing, and if God doesn't will it, it doesn't matter whose fault it is, whether it's mine or somebody else's. God has allowed it. Yeah. So, uh, what can I do? And I that's say the, that's the challenging one, is because <laughs> oh, for, know, terrible for me, Joseph. It is because you plan, you plan, you plan, and then it doesn't happen, and then. Directly, you want to be in the flesh straight away. Yeah. Before the flesh always comes first, before the spirit comes and yeah. say, "All right, settle down." And we say, "Why didn't it happen?" In, instead of saying, "All things work together for good." Oh, that verse is never near. <laughs> you don't want that verse anywhere no, near. In all things, give thanks. Yes. No. Uh, no. So I, I've had to work through that over the years because I, I was I was too strict. I, if I planned it, it had to happen. Yeah. And. and even God plans things and it doesn't happen. Yeah. God, God planned for Solomon and he yeah. backslid. He planned for Saul, go and kill the Amalekites. He didn't. Yeah. So what does God do? Yeah. It's all right. Because he God, gets he can bring it about. God doesn't yes. get frustrated yeah. in the sense that he, he says, all right, that man failed. Mm. I found a man after my own heart. I found David yeah. now. He can fulfill all my will. I mean, Saul was meant to fulfill God's will, mm -hmm. but he didn't. Yeah. But I found a man. So God will always find a way because God yeah. is God. That is, so, that, is, that is really beautiful, Maurice, because, you know, God's, God's ways and our ways, we are limited. Yeah. So our worry easily leads to sin. But when God thinks about something, he has all power to make it pass regardless. He yeah. can override even human will. Yeah, see, yeah. and that's, that's really beautiful, that. Because if I fail, yeah. I think, oh, what will ha ha happen now? Yeah. I can't do this and I can't do that. Yeah. But God thinks, I can do it another way. Yeah, yeah. I can, God's got no problem. And we should have no problem if we're yeah. so full of God, we say, yeah. God can make another way. I wonder what God will do in this circumstance now Ooh. that this has failed. Yeah. What will God do? Yes. Not, oh, it can't happen. Yeah. That's negative. That's unbelief. Yes. In other yes. words, we don't trust God. God can't do it now because this has happened. Yes. Yeah. No, it's good because this is, for me, it's really important because what we do, we, we, we make God like us. And we limit it because we limit it. We limit God as well. Yeah. That is such a, a ignorant view. I don't. I don't really think we realize how we're trying to limit God. Yes, a, a limitless God all, so all the time. Yeah, because our plans don't come to pass. We get upset. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. we've got examples in the Bible. What yeah. about Lazarus? Exactly. God is dead. Four and, days. And Jesus was yeah. coming. To, we asked Jesus. He yeah. doesn't care about us. Yeah. What will happen now? He's dead. It's yeah. too late. Yeah. It's never too late for God. He can raise the dead. So w why should we worry? Even if somebody dies. Yeah. My wife's written a book. Mm -hmm. It's past midnight. What happened to the miracle? Because we say, yeah. you know, God answers the prayer at a, minute, at a second hour. before at 11 yeah. hour. But yeah. God, sometimes God answers the prayer at one o'clock after yes. midnight. Yeah. He, raised, he can raise the dead when all hope's lost. When yeah. you pass the cell by day, mm. God can bring it back. He can stop the sun. So he can, he's a master of time. So it's really the whole battle real bad. This study we have in Techno Thoughts, I just perceive is like the battle of keeping the faith. Yeah, we don't believe. Yeah, yeah. Or belief. Yeah, yeah, is really exposing our unbelief and yeah, and how to deal with it. So yeah, yeah. because no, we don't you. really believe God yeah. for tomorrow. Yeah, I don't know what the future holds, yeah. but I know who holds the future. That's yes. what we sing, but we don't really mean it. And because we want to have, we want to be in control of tomorrow. Ah. That's that's the problem. Yeah. I, I'm the idol. Yeah. I, I must be in control. Yes, it's yeah. about me. Yeah. But it's not about me. It's about God and his plans, not my plans. Yeah. Amen. What does it say? Man plans, mm -hmm. but God orders his foot. Yes, that's the problem. Uh, yeah. Amen. So Amen. we can't seek two kingdoms. If you're seeking the mm -hmm. kingdom in heaven, mm -hmm. you don't worry about tomorrow. True. Because tomorrow you may be in the kingdom. You may die yeah. and you wake up in the kingdom. So... If you're seeking the kingdoms on earth, you're not seeking the kingdoms. If I'm trying yeah. to build my church, mm -hmm. I, I'm against God. He's building the church. Yeah. You see, I, we're fighting God all the time. Yeah. God will add to the church daily, such as should be saved. I we know. just preach the gospel. Amen. So you can't seek two kingdoms, two futures. Well, the world and carnal Christians, they're seeking their best mm -hmm. life now, now. on earth. Yeah. And I understand that for the world. That's the only life they've got. They don't believe 
in heaven and hell. Mm -hmm. So they're having their best life now. And they're wise to do it. That's mm -hmm. the only life they'll have. So they have the best life now. But a Christian, to want to have the best life now, how blind are they, Joseph? Yeah. Want all the blessings and the comforts now, and they'll miss the millennium. You can't have two kingdoms. Mm -hmm. You can't have your cake and the hate mm -hmm, mm -hmm, You know, mm -hmm. if you want to keep your hate day, you can't buy the cake. Mm -hmm. If you buy the cake, you've no hate day. So you have the kingdom now, treasures on earth, or kingdom in the future, treasures in heaven. Yeah. And that's the only way of contentment. Don't worry about mm -hmm. food, clothes, your life tomorrow. So Amen. Jesus says, obviously, seek the future kingdom, contentment mm -hmm. on earth. Mm -hmm. Don't be anxious for tomorrow because it's false security. Mm. Let me talk Explain, about insurance. Yeah. I'm yes, not, I'm not yeah. against insurance if yeah. you want to insure. I don't have any insurance. That's what the government forced me to do. But all insurance <laughs> is based on fear. Mm -hmm. You know, you see the poster. I remember a poster with a, a silhouette of a, a thief breaking in the house. Yeah. This could happen to, to you. you. And you think, oh, no, we might get robbed. Mm -hmm. Or the house may burn down. What will happen? We better insure. Mm -hmm. So you pay money. For peace of mind, I can sleep at night. If the house burns down, I'm yeah. insured. If this happens, I'm all right, I'm insured. Mm -hmm. If my wife dies, I'm insured, I get a lot of money. So it's fear mm -hmm. of the future. What if? So we pay money for mm -hmm. peace of mind, but a Christian should have peace of mind. Yes. So I'm not against insurance. If you need insurance, well, mm -hmm. God bless you. I don't. Mm -hmm. Because I don't worry about tomorrow. God, tomorrow is God's to me. If the house yeah. burns down, God can find me another 10 houses. It's really making God your security, God your assurance, God yeah, your everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so it doesn't matter to me if, you know, I don't need health insurance. I don't need any insurance because I trust God. Nothing can happen to me unless God allows it. If a sparrow can't drop to the ground without God seeing exactly. it. Exactly. How, oh, ye of little faith. Yeah, so. Do you think because of lack of intimacy and relationship that most Christians don't really have, they have, they have, they have a relationship with church and the idol God, but they don't really have, that's what they can't really trust. So they can't really entrust it tomorrow yeah. because God might not come to pass. So we need to have a backup plan. If you can't trust God for tomorrow, I've just thought, this is, yeah. I've never thought yeah. this before. If yeah. you can't trust God for tomorrow, it proves you don't trust God today. today. Oh, gosh. You only think you yeah. do. You think, I'll, I trust God today, yeah. but you can't trust him t for tomorrow, so you're deceiving yourself. If you yeah. can't trust God for now, mm -hmm. for today, mm -hmm. how could you trust him for tomorrow? You're deceived. Guys, this is tough, but we need to accept what the Bible says because we really need to trust God. We need to, Christianity is real. Yes. The word of God is real. God is real. So we really have to move from doctrinal statements to the reality of Christ. And, and I really believe this. So we need to go through this. Even though it's difficult, guys, hold on to the word of God. Because God wants to be real in our lives. And that's why he wants us to trust him. Because we, we talk about trust in relationship. Yes. If you haven't got a relationship with God, you can't do this. No. Amen. Please just go ahead, yeah, honestly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's read James chapter 4, verse 13. Mm -hmm. I've already intimated it, but it's good to show that the scripture says this. Go to now, you that say today or tomorrow, we'll go into such a, such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. Which verse is that, Maureen? The planning for the future, 13. Okay. Chapter 4, verse 13. Mm -hmm. Whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow. All right. Yeah. For what is your life? It's a vapour that appeareth for a little while, then vanishes yeah, away. For you ought to say... If the, if Lord, the Lord wills, wills yeah. we'll live and do this yeah. and do that. Yeah. So it's quite clear. Yeah. Uh, That's with regard to worry about to worry about tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. I've got some points. I've got two points. Why not worry about tomorrow? Mm -hmm. Because tomorrow never comes. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow can't come. It doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. When tomorrow comes, when I wake up tomorrow, mm -hmm. it won't be tomorrow. It'll be today. Mm -hmm. I wake up okay. and say, I feel good today. I won't say, I feel good tomorrow, will I? Mm -hmm. So the next day, 
is not tomorrow, it's today. You can't live in tomorrow. It doesn't mm-hmm. exist. It's just a, you may never see tomorrow. It yeah. doesn't exist. It's the hope of the future. Mm-hmm. It's only in your mind. So it's presumption. Which, it's presumption yeah. because it doesn't exist. It never comes when we wake up tomorrow. Mm-hmm. We don't say, oh, it's tomorrow today. We say it's today. Yeah, it's present. It's present. Yeah. You can only live in the present. Yeah. Uh, and so most people procrastinate and most people plan. But I found that most people, including Christians, so this is across the board, they live in the past or the future, Future. but they don't live in the present. So an example, I'll take somebody in the world, you know, they come in on Monday morning to work and they Mm -hmm. say, whoa, we had a great weekend. They talk yeah. about the weekend. They don't yeah. talk about Monday. Mm-hmm. They talk about Saturday, Sunday. I saw United. Did you see that goal? Or we went to this rock concert. Mm-hmm. Or we got blind drunk and we did this and we did that. Yeah. So they're all boasting or telling, mm-hmm. or oh, I had a terrible weekend. This yeah. happened and that happened and my wife left me. Mm-hmm. So they're looking back over the past weekend. Mm-hmm. And that takes a couple of days to get it out of the system. Yeah. Tuesday, they're still talking about Manchester So they're United. missing out on the... They're missing out on the day. And Wednesday comes, mm-hmm. and now we're halfway through the week. So now they switch from the past to the future. Mm-hmm. And they say, roll on yeah. Saturday, United are away today. Mm-hmm. Roll on Saturday, I'm going to get drunk. If that's what the wife did, I'll find another woman this weekend. So they live in the past mm-hmm. for the first part of the week. The second part of the week, mm-hmm. they're looking forward to the weekend. And they're missing every day. Yeah. They could come in Monday and think, wow, another day. Mm. Tuesday, another day, but they live in the future. Some people live six months ahead. Every day they come in, August, we're going to Barbados for two yeah. weeks, and they'll save all the money. They've only uh, got a, a, a factory, a labouring job, but they'll save up thousands of pounds over the year mm-hmm. to go to Barbados and smoke big cigars mm-hmm. and act as though they're millionaires oh, and yeah. lie on the beach for two weeks, and that's... The whole year they're looking forward to that. They're planning, they're getting new swimwear, they're getting new shorts. Mm -hmm. They're planning for the whole year, for two weeks out of the year. It's it's really important because whenever I I look at them, the past and the future, and then in the present, most people are generally negative about the present. They don't really like the moment that they are right now, so they rather have the hope in the future and then make it up. Or, or live off the past. Live off the past, yeah. The past, so they're dangerous. evoking those yeah. things. Oh, I had a great weekend. Mm. And they're living off the excitement of the weekend. Yeah. What about the excitement today? Oh. But Christians are no different. Mm. Monday, Tuesday, or oh, blessed weekend, we went to this conference, we got filled with the Holy Ghost and we felt God's presence and that. Mm. And halfway through the week, they're looking for the next conference, the next meeting, the next you know, yeah. Hillsong tune to come out. Yeah. What about feeling God's presence today? No. Why do I need to go to a convention? Mm-hmm. Conventions are all right, mm-hmm. but I've got to live every day in the presence of God. I've yeah. got to have unity with my wife every day, yeah. with God every day. So mm-hmm. it, it's that's why you shouldn't worry about tomorrow. His mercy is in you every day, every morning. Yeah. So we have an opportunity to to do the best we can with the Holy, Holy Holy Spirit every day. Right. And we only have today anyway, really. Yeah, that's all we have. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is powerful. It said, seek the kingdom. Mm-hmm. Well, seeking is in the future. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's it's not now. I'm, I'm seeking it. I'm moving towards it. I'm mm-hmm. looking for something. I'm seeking it. Mm-hmm. I'm, so... If you're not seeking the kingdom that's coming Mm -hmm. and all your focus is on that, living today for the kingdom that's coming, you're living for the kingdoms of this world. Mm -hmm. I think it'd be good, we've got time to Mm -hmm. share my experience with the insurance Mm -hmm. man. Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm not (laughs) criticising insurance. If you need it, God bless you. I I don't. But the insurance man came to me and he said, Mr. Barrett, I see you have no insurance on your house and that. Mm -hmm. And I said, that's right. He says, well, don't you think you need it? And, of course, I'm a bit mischievous. So I said, oh, yeah, I do, I do need insurance. Uh, can you insure me? Mm-hmm. Uh, he said, oh, yeah. I said, wait a minute. I'm a happy little man. Mm-hmm. I says, can you insure that I'll never be morose and sad and lonely? He said, I can't do that. I says, well, can you insure uh, my daughters? I had two daughters at the time. Mm-hmm. I said, 
I love them and I, I'm bringing them up, you know, as best I can. But it would be terrible if they ended up on the street selling their bodies or on drugs. Can you ensure that they'll never get on drugs or sell their bodies on the street? Yeah, he says, yeah. we can't do that. No. I said, well, what can you ensure? He said, well, you can ensure your house and your possessions. I said, I thought you insured what you valued. Mm -hmm. He said, yeah. I said, well, I've told you what I value. I value the love of my wife. Yeah. Can you ensure? I, I, I forgot that question. Yeah. I said, can you ensure my wife will always love me and won't run away <laughs> with the milkman? No. He said, I can't ensure that. I said, mm -hmm. I've told you what I value, the love of my wife. Mm -hmm. The daughters. The welfare of my daughters yeah. and my own happiness. That's what I value. Yeah. I, I said I don't value the house. If it, it burns down, it's of no consequence. I, I said I, I, I'm a Christian and I, I'm a minister. And I said, I, I, you know, I'm serving God, yeah. so I don't worry about those things. He said, oh, well, we sell lots of insurance to Christians. I said, well, now you've met a real one. Wow. I said, I actually believe yeah. what's in the Bible. Take mm -hmm. no thought for your life. Take no thought. Yeah. I said, I work for the God who created the whole universe. Why should I worry? Mm. I said, you're selling peace of mind. You want me to give you money so I can sleep at night because I'm insured. He said, yeah. I said, well, I have peace of mind. Why mm. should I pay for what I've got? Mm. I've already got it. Yeah. Yeah, I, can't, I can't pay you for it, for what I've... I said I sleep like a baby. It, the future is of no consequence. I'm not worried about tomorrow. I, I'm Today, my wife loves me. My daughters are safe. I'm a happy little man, so I'm happy. I don't worry about tomorrow. Well, I thought it'd fall about laughing. Mm -hmm. and, and so it's just a bit... It's yeah. a screw loose. Yeah. But I, I'm amazed when you challenge the world. Yeah. You know what he said? No. He said, wow, I wish I could live like that. He said, I'm insured up to my eyeballs. See. He said, I've everything insured. He said, but I wish I could live like that. You can provoke the world. When yeah. I tell the Christians, they say, oh, well, you've not got to be stupid. God's give you a brain, you know. That was a gospel you spoke Because it's challenged. But yeah. he was impressed. And I found when the, the world are impressed when you actually believe yeah. what the Bible says. They hate it. And then you want what you what you have, peace. He wanted it. He, he said, I wish I could live like that. Yes. In other words, I wish I could have peace of mind without yes. paying for it. But he couldn't. I know. So uh, the second thing, yeah. why not worry about tomorrow? Because we've got to say if God wills, we don't know the future. Mm -hmm. The second point, when we plan for ourselves, mm -hmm. we stop God planning and providing. See, if I provide for myself, mm -hmm. imagine God wants me to move house. Mm -hmm. And God's been saying, Morris, you, you know, move house. And I've had the thought, I think God wants me to move house. But I never do it. I don't mm -hmm. want to really, so I never mm -hmm. do it. What's God going to do? Maybe he'll burn the house down. Now will you move? Mm -hmm. You know, God puts people on the back in hospital to get their attention. God will God will do what he, he needs to do yeah. to get your attention. He doesn't want to bring disaster to you, but he brought Israel to the knees so many times, mm -hmm. plagues, famine, their enemies coming in, only mm -hmm. to get their attention so they'd yeah. repent and change. Mm -hmm. So when I'm, if I insure my house, I'm insuring against God. God can't take that away. Because if you take it away, God, it's all right. The world will give it me back. Yeah. So it's so, like transferring your trust from God to the world system. Yeah. I'm not trusting God at all. That's so dangerous because you don't see, you don't really realize that's what Well, you're doing. imagine Job. Yeah. If Job was insured, God couldn't test him. Job's insured, right? The house falls down. Yeah. He loses all his cattle. He uses all his sheep, all his goats. Don't worry, Mrs. Job. We're insured with the Abbey National. We'll get it all back. Wow. He would have get it back from the world. God couldn't test him. You see, we insure against God. Mm -hmm. We won't allow God to bring things in. On. Why should I worry? Yeah. What circumstances happen if a die of cancer got run over by a bus? Or, or it doesn't the house burns down or... My, you know, my wife dies. Why should I? I've got eternal life, Joseph. Why am I worried about the flesh and things of the earth? Yeah. It has to come by revelation. I tell you why, because as you speak, I'm seeing Christ being vulnerable, being made vulnerable. Yeah. And you said it before, being made a doormat. Yeah. And it's like, 
what is the security guard around Jesus Christ? You know, what, what is all of those? He's almost exposed and Christian. We don't want to be exposed. We don't want to be vulnerable. We don't want to be in that position. But because we're not thinking how God can take the glory out of that. That's the key. God can't get the glory. When we, you see, if the house burns down yeah. and I'm insured, I get it back from the world. But if it burns down and I've got nothing, yeah. when God provides it, yeah. then he gets the glory. Yeah. When a man in America said, I've had a dream, Mr. Barrett, mm -hmm. uh, and God's told me I'm a multimillionaire, I've, I've got to buy you a mansion. Now, who gets the glory that? I, I don't know the man. God yeah. gets the glory. Yeah. But the insurance man can't glorify God. No, no. So we stop God providing for us. Yeah. It's, it's like my child going next door for mm. food. And I say, why do you go next door for food? D d don't you think I'll feed you? Wow. Why go to another family for food when your father's got food on the table? See, we don't trust yes. God as much as we think. This for me is so challenging. I mean, I hope you're really following the discussion here. The transfer of trust. We, we don't even realize we do it every day. We trust in the world system rather than trusting God, our Father. Yet we pray, our Father who are in heaven, hallowed be your name. You know, we pray those prayers. It's like we don't really mean them. This is, this is so good. From one verse, don't worry about tomorrow. We're having a conclusion and we're going through this. And I, this is really, really serious. I mean, Maurice, because we don't realize how much we, we, we step out of the, the faith and uh, we move into unbelief. It's so subtle, Maurice. This, I'm really thinking about the subtlety of it because yeah. most Christians, I don't think we realize what we're really doing. No, well, well, Offending we did, God. We did expose it, Joseph. Yeah. You know, I was exposed years ago. About, I was insured. I, I trusted the world for everything. I was no different than the world. Like most Christians, they mm -hmm. have the same securities mm -hmm. as the world. And, and the question is, well, should we use the world system? And I say, if you want to, but it's second best. Mm. It proves you don't trust God. See, if I'm an evangelist and I've got 10,000 crowd coming, I can trust God that nobody will come up and stab me or nobody will harm me. And so I can have bodyguards like, like the big preachers do. Yeah. Jesus didn't have bodyguards. Exactly. But the, he was vulnerable. Yeah. But when they were going to throw him over a cliff, the angels came and parted the people and he just walked through the middle he of them. The middle. Yeah. You see... When you're vulnerable, you get your miracles. People don't get miracles because they won't be vulnerable. Mm. You've got to be vulnerable to get a miracle. The Red Sea opened when they were going to be annihilated, when yes. they were vulnerable. Yeah. The mountains trapped them. The enemies coming to kill every one of them, yeah. make, take An them back to slavery. Situation. Impossible. Then you get your miracle. But we won't get in impossible situations. We have backups. We, we have backups. And it's as simple as that. The backup means you, you insure against God, whatever it is. Yeah. So if you want to use the world, God bless you. Yeah. That's up to you. But it's second best. You, you prove you don't trust God. Like the faith preachers who have bodyguards prove they don't trust God. They don't believe there's a billion angels to protect them. Mm. So they go to the world. Yeah. And what does the world do? You have an armed guard, mm -hmm. a big man. Mm -hmm. Not a little man with a gun. It's got to be a big man to intimidate them. Yeah. The angels can't intimidate people. Oh, dear. So, you know, but Christians are in the world system. Yeah. They're happy when the children yeah. go in the army and learn to kill people. <laughs> There's no just wars, Joseph. It's yeah. all about money and corruption. Yeah. Anyone who thinks there's a just war are deceived. Let's finish with an illustration. Luke yeah. 12. Mm -hmm. This is the man who built the barns. He was thinking about tomorrow. tomorrow. <laughs> Luke more 12. Luke 12. Verse 19. Verse from verse 15. Mm hmm and he said unto them, take heed, beware of covetousness. So he's, yeah. he's on the, there's so much about covetousness yeah. in the Gospels mm -hmm. and in the epistles. For a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of things which he possesses, yes. yeah. the kingdom on earth. 
And he spoke a parable unto them. The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. So he wasn't a poor man that was became rich. He was already a rich, rich man. man. Yeah. So God had blessed him. And now God blessed him with an abundant harvest. Mm -hmm. And he thought, take no thought, is thinking. Yeah. It, but it's wrong thinking. Yeah. And he thought within himself, what shall I do? I've no room to bestow my fruits. And he said, this I'll do. I'll pull down my barns, <laughs> build greater, and there I'll bestow my fruits and my good. There's nothing wrong with that. To let the so fruits he's planning. Rot. Yeah, he's planning. The fruits don't go rotten. I'll yeah. store them in my barns. And I'll say to my soul, so, to himself, you see, yeah. he's talking to himself. Yeah. Say to his soul, thou hast much good laid up for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. The future's secure. Yes. I'm insured. Yeah. My bonds are full. That's his insurance. In the yeah. old days before insurance, mm -hmm. gold, sovereigns, mm -hmm. or goods, that was his insurance. Yeah. If anything happens, I'm all right. My bonds are full. A reserve. If my house burns down, yeah. I've got enough goods to sell yeah. to build another house. Yeah. I'm, I'm secure. I'm thinking about the Federal Reserve. And God they, said, have, they have things stored up already. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Amen. Go ahead. And God said, yeah. you fool. Uh, when God says a fool, yeah. that's, that means you're damned. Yeah. The fool said in his heart, yeah. there's, there's no, no God. God. Yeah. Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Mm -hmm. Then whose things shall those be which thou hast provided? You're provided for insurance, but, for, but not for you, for your children. Mm -hmm. So is he. So God called him a fool, not because he was rich, not because he, he built bigger barns, not because he stored his good, not because he planned for the future. It's good mm -hmm. to leave an inheritance for your children. Yeah. The Bible says work hard, leave an inheritance for your children. Mm -hmm. This is the key. You're a fool, mm -hmm. so is he. So yeah. you're a fool yeah. that lays up treasures for himself and is not rich towards God. Yes. So he had treasures on earth. That was all right, mm -hmm. but he didn't have treasures in heaven. Mm -hmm. And he loved riches. He loved, mm -hmm. like the rich young man, he loved treasure on earth, mm -hmm. but he didn't get treasure in heaven. Mm -hmm. Because That's, Jesus yeah. said, sell what you've got, give to the poor, and you'll have treasure in heaven. Mm -hmm. That's a good connection because we don't really make this connection between treasures on earth and treasures in heaven. But this is being rich towards God that illustrates that. that it's, yeah, it's really he, he had treasures on earth. There's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Rich men do good with your riches. He may yeah. have been doing good with yeah. it, but he hadn't got any treasures in heaven. Mm -hmm. So he's a fool because he liked riches, obviously, worked hard for his riches. Mm -hmm. Why didn't he work hard for riches in heaven? Mm -hmm. I can't understand Christians. They work hard. They earn well. They buy a house. They do this. They're, they're good workers. Mm -hmm. Why don't they work so hard to get treasures because in heaven? Because they identify prosperity into the, the, like Jesus said, the amount, the content, the volume of the assets and what they have. Basically, we talk Christianity, but we haven't changed our minds. We have not renewed um, according to the scriptures. We're not thinking right. We, <laughs> we yeah. take thought for the wrong thing. Yeah. So being rich towards God, I don't think it's a concept that we really think seriously about. Yeah. Because it's like abstract. It's something, yeah. but we want to have it now, like palpable physically. Yeah. But it's yeah. all an illusion because yeah. we say, I'm saving for a rainy day. Yeah. Well, you can't save. Yeah. You can only save for the future. You can't save for the past. You can't save for the present. Yeah. You can only save for the future. So it's illusion. It's a deceitfulness of riches. Yeah. It's, it's, they something... take wings and fly away because money may lose its value. After yeah. the last war in Germany, they yeah. were taking a wheelbarrow full of millions of Deutschmarks yeah. to buy a loaf of bread. Right. Same in... Uh, Zimbabwe, the, yeah. the value, yeah, they were yeah. paying thousands of, <laughs> of their currency for a loaf of bread. Money could lose its value. You could be a millionaire and lose yeah. it overnight if the banks collapse. So you, you can only save mm -hmm. for the future. You can only spend today. You can't spend in the future. Mm -hmm. You can only spend today, but you can only save for, for the future. And the third reason mm -hmm. why which should take no thought for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said it. So let's end by yeah. reading Jesus. Yeah, Matthew. Matthew 6. Six. Thirty-four. Why shouldn't we take thought for tomorrow? Because tomorrow's problems will mm -hmm. take care of themselves. Mm -hmm. 
Take no thought for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Mm -hmm. You can't worry about tomorrow. And this is the key which we want to leave people with. Sufficient, Sufficient. unto the day yeah. is the evil mm -hmm. thereof. Yeah. It'll take all your acumen, all your efforts, all your tenacity, all your discipline to live one day for Christ, to, to enjoy God today, to sing his praises today when you don't feel like it, mm. to speak in tongues as you're driving the car. Mm. It, to, there's enough problems today to deal with. Fancy dealing with tomorrow that may never come mm. and you neglect today. So many Christians neglect each day. Mm -hmm. they're, they're living in the future. They're washing the dishes and they hate washing dishes. Mm -hmm. So they're thinking about when I wash the dishes, I can watch that program on television, the cooking thing. So they're not enjoying washing the dishes yeah. or the woman ironing the shirt. She hates ironing shirts, but she thinks once I've done this, I can listen to that praise to it. I can sit mm -hmm. down and watch Hillsong. So she's thinking about the future. She's not thinking about, she's not enjoying in the ironing. Why not enjoy? And most people don't enjoy what they do. They do it as duty so they can do what they do enjoy. But we're supposed to enjoy everything in all things give thanks. Yeah. Thank you, I've got a husband to iron shirts for. A lot of women would love to iron shirts. They've got no husband. Yes. So thank God in all things. Thank God I've got food to cook for my husband, not I hate cooking. So it's really missing out the point. We're not living today. If you don't live today for Christ, you can't live tomorrow for him, really. No. Because if you, you, sufficient is a day because the challenge is so much today. It means that we don't really probably understand how much challenge we have today to even serve Christ today in a way that is pleasing to the Father. Yeah. So we don't, which proves to me that we don't really live for Christ daily. We don't really we, we believe don't in really. Christ. We don't really have faith in him. Yeah. We say we do, yeah. but we do duty. Yeah. You don't need faith for the religion. Yeah. Religion can make you go to church, read your yeah. Bible, pray. You don't need faith for that. You don't need any faith for duty. But you need faith to live the Christian life. Today. 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 So I've got a, a scripture to finish with. So... Mm -hmm. Tomorrow will look after the things of itself. Let yeah. tomorrow worry about itself. Don't do jobs God for him. God's job for him. He's planning your tomorrow, yeah. so why should you plan it? <laughs> wow. Let God plan your tomorrow. So three things to do with your life. Mm -hmm. I've got two scriptures and then we'll, we'll finish, Joseph. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 3. Trust in the Lord with mm. all your heart. Not trust in the insurance, trust the world. Easy. Trust in the Lord yeah. with all your heart. Amen. And don't lead to your own understanding. Planning is leading to your own understanding. Yes. Yeah. That's, I think, don't do it. Mm -hmm. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Yeah. And he'll direct your paths. So if you do those. How, how much we know that scripture? How much we quote that scripture? I don't live it. Yeah. But Christians are always leading to that. I don't think God would do this. That's your own understanding, your understanding of God. We just read the Bible and say, Lord, I accept that. I don't understand it, but I accept it. We don't lead to our own understanding and work it out theologically. Mm -hmm. And the other scripture is Ecclesiastes, just the next mm -hmm. book in the Bible, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon. Ecclesiastes 2. And I'll finish with this, Joseph, and then That's maybe fine. you can pray or mm -hmm. conclude. Ecclesiastes 2, mm -hmm. verse 18. This is Solomon. Mm -hmm. Yea, I hated all my labour which I take <laughs> under the sun. Yeah. Because I should leave it to a man that should follow after me. All my hard work, all my diligence, mm -hmm. like I'm working and I've bought a house, I've got money <laughs> in the bank, I'm going to die and leave it all to somebody else. And who knoweth whether he shall be a wise man or a fool? And it's so funny because he's hating in the present what will happen tomorrow. I mean, that's messed up. <laughs> that is, that is, Solomon was a messed up man at the end is, of his life. I mean... <laughs> Wow. He says, and who knoweth whether he shall be a wise man or a fool? Yeah. He's worried about tomorrow. Already. My children have brought them up well, and they say, yes, dad, no, dad. Yeah. But how many multimillionaires have brought the children up? And the children yeah. say, yeah, we'll take care of your money, dad. And then when the dad dies, he becomes a playboy. He always had it in his mind. 
Who knows whether it'd be a fool or wise? Mm -hmm. And yet his rule mm -hmm. is in charge of all my labours, wherein I've laboured, mm -hmm. and when I've shown myself wise under the sun. This is vanity, it's mm -hmm. all worthless, useless. Mm -hmm. Therefore I went about to cause my heart to despair of all the labour <laughs> which I'd done under the sun. Yeah. For there is a man whose labour is in wisdom mm -hmm. and in knowledge and equity. Mm -hmm. Yet to a man that hath not laboured therein shall he leave it for his portion. Mm -hmm. This also is vanity and a great evil. evil. For what hath man of all his labour mm -hmm. and of the vexation of his heart where it hath laboured under the sun? He's saying, how can I get rid of this conundrum, this puzzle? For all his days of sorrow and mm -hmm. his travail grief. Yes, his heart taketh not rest in the night. This is also vanity. Mm -hmm. And here's the key. Mm -hmm. There is nothing better for a man yeah. that he should eat and drink and that <laughs> he should make his soul enjoy good in his labours. Yes. Not, not when you look back on your labour and say, oh, that's wonderful, or what about tomorrow? Enjoy work in your labours. Yeah. Enjoy every minute. No. This also I saw it was from the hand of God. So he's frustrated. He says, yeah. it's all vanity. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, it's all messed up. The only good thing is to enjoy good in your labour. Enjoy every moment of every yeah. day. Yeah. That's, that's the key. Mm -hmm. So take no thought for your life. Mm -hmm. Take no thought for food, take no thought for clothes, mm -hmm. take no thought for tomorrow. Wonderful mm -hmm. teaching of Jesus. Yeah. And that ends the chapter. Yeah. So we start a, a completely different part yeah, of the, the sermon. Yeah. We start on wisdom. Mm -hmm. I think it's judged not. So that'll be interesting. Absolutely. So yeah. will you conclude, Joseph? No, I really, I really want to thank God for the time that you spent watching and listening to this. And hopefully you will search the scriptures like we did, because this is not our own opinion. In fact, we're only scratching the surface, really, because this is a lot of teaching and it's deep. So we need to go through it. Even though it's difficult, guys, we need to continue to follow. We need to go through it. This is about a, the depth of relationship between what God is doing in our lives, how we should trust him daily. And it's really about transfer of trust. If we're trusting the world, let's beginning again, like Proverbs say, trust in the Lord. But we need to mean it this time, guys. So let's go for it. And I really thank God. Maurice is going to pray in closing. Please, Maurice, I just wanted to pray because this is this was so serious and God inspired to explain this to us. And I believe that it will be only good for you to seal it for us. Please go ahead and pray. Please. Lord, you. we're so grateful that you give us revelation on the scriptures. We Amen. don't take it for granted, Lord. We, we give you all the praise and all the glory. Yes. And I just pray that something that Joseph and I have said today will touch people's heart. It, it, that their hearts will be open, their ears will be attentive, and they'll have eyes that can see spiritually to get the truth of what we're saying, yeah. that we're secure in Christ mm. and we don't need any other security, that mm. you are our life, you are our hope, mm. you are our future. Yes. Please help us, Father. Uh, I just pray that everyone will get something from this study. Mm. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. God See bless you. See you for the next study. Absolutely. God bless.